Hey everybody, welcome to the Streaming CT YouTube channel. Today we are talking about a cellular bonding router by a company called Mr. Net. Let's jump right into what this thing actually is and does. This box is for people who need ultra reliable internet. If you're looking for gigabit up, gigabit down, fiber, that's not really the point of this box. The point of this box is to be able to go out in the middle of nowhere, um, as long as there's some cell service, and be able to have connectivity. Because this is a broadcast and live streaming channel, we have a need for that. Ours is not necessarily in the middle of nowhere, though we have done some events that literally are in a winery and there's no internet and you have to rely on something like this. But most of our events are in a venue, so a hotel ballroom or at a corporate site, and they will often provide internet. But we all know nothing's perfect. You run a test, it's working perfectly, then a whole bunch of people show up, someone trips on a cable, someone unplugs something, you're in the middle of a stream, and what do you do? Especially if you're being paid like we are to do streaming. So that's why we have adopted a cellular bonding all the time policy for live streaming. Now we didn't always use a box like this. We used a device from Teradek that did the cellular bonding, but it was strictly for video only, meaning you would plug a video HDMI or SDI cable into it and you would bond the video signal. There's several different companies out there that do this. LiveU is one of the biggest ones, TVU, DeGero, and like I mentioned, Teradek. Those are probably the top four that I've worked with. And they can work really well, but here's the issue. It's just for video. So if you have video you're plugging in to the box and sending back to, let's say, a news station or wherever you're sending it, it works great. But what if I have stuff on that network that needs to get out to the internet that I need to be bonded, like multiple SRT encoders or multiple streams, um, multiple encoders for video. What do I do? That's why we were on a hunt to move away from those type of bonded streaming devices over to a router solution. Other use cases for a box like this are emergency services, emergency preparedness, um, disaster recovery. There's also use cases for transportation. So think of like a bus. Another use case is trade shows. A lot of times if you're going into a trade show and you have a booth, the location where the trade show is will charge a huge amount of money to give you internet connectivity. So having something like this allows you to basically have internet connectivity wherever you go as long as there's cell service. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware for a second. On the front, you'll see a USB port, a WAN port, wide area network, a LAN port, local area network, a reset button, mode, power, your DC in, which is your actual, that's how you're gonna power this device, and then your on off switch. On the rear of this device, you'll see all these antennas. Now when you receive this, your antennas will be off. So let me take one of these antennas off and show you. This is what's called an SMA connector. It's a very common connector. It's normal polarity, regular polarity SMA connector. You can get other antennas. So you can get outdoor rated antennas or higher power antennas that you can connect to these six SMA ports. The antennas on this do work just fine. They're just plain old LTE antennas. So under the antennas, there is another USB port and another USB port and then your three SIM card slots. So you have Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile are the three bands this is set up to work with. The one I have is only set up to work in the United States of America. It can work in Canada as well. If you do have needs that are international, um, I suggest contacting me or contacting Mr. Net. We, by the way, we are a reseller. If you do want to purchase one of these, uh, reach out to us, but let's get back to talking about the box. If we turn it to the side, there are three screw holes and it does come with screws populated. I have them off right now, but you can rack mount this. In fact, I work with someone to design a 3D print 19 inch, normal 19 inch rack mount for this device. So I have two variations, one that just racks this device as is, and it just, just like this into a rack. Another one that actually moves the antennas to the front. Comment down below if you're interested in those rack ears. We will be selling those as part of the package. So if you did want them and you want the rack ears to go with it, um, we can ship those to you as well. So as far as construction, the box is metal. It's metal all around. The entire box is metal. It does feel well built. So you get shipped this box, the antennas are off. So that would be the first thing you'd screw the antennas in. You would then plug in to the power and let it connect to the network. Once your mode and power lights are both on, 
that means it's connected to the Mr. Net service. Now cellular bonding does require some sort of cloud service because what you're doing is you're taking the packets, you're splitting them up, breaking them into small pieces, running them across multiple networks, and then they have to get put back together again before they go to the end destination, whether that's a streaming point or just google.com. So this device connects up to the Mr. Net service. Now, once those lights are on, you've given it a couple minutes to boot up. So we would plug into the LAN port here. There's no real configuration because by the time you've gotten one of these boxes, you've already set up a credit card with Mr. Net so you can be billed for the data um, and your account is active, essentially. So why do I have this box here? Well, this is a network switch. So what it does is it takes that connection from the LAN jack, and now I can plug in computers, I can plug in encoders, whatever I can, and it, it doesn't need to be this particular switch, it really could be any managed or unmanaged network switch that you're plugging in devices. This box acts as a router. What that means is it will issue IP addresses. So if I plug my laptop into this, my laptop is going to get a 192.168.100. something address assigned on the network and any other devices that are plugged in to this switch or to another switch or directly into the device will get an IP address. When some people hear router, they think wireless router. There's wired router and wireless router. What we're talking about right now is just the wired part. We will talk about wireless in just a second. To sum up the initial setup, you more or less put the antennas on, plug it into power, give it a couple of minutes to boot up, and then plug into the LAN port on the device, whether it's directly to a device, to a computer, an encoder, or you're going into a switch that is going to disperse this connectivity out to multiple devices, you really should just be able to plug and play because on the far end, it's already been provisioned before you've received this box. It's ready to start sending packets up to the cloud. What if your devices are only wireless? You have five iPads that are point of sale terminals, which is another use case for something like this, remote point of sale and you need to connect them to Wi-Fi. Mr. Net does supply this USB Wi-Fi dongle. Now it's not exactly uh, high tech, it works. It's made to work with this box. So all you'll do is you will plug it into a USB port. So in my case, we'll just go USB one and give it a minute and then you'll be able to connect to the Wi-Fi of this box. In the email, the provisioning email that you would have gotten ahead of receiving this box, you'll get the username and password of the Wi-Fi. For me personally, I really wouldn't use this dongle. We don't, we do most things wired. And if we're going to do wireless, we'll actually use our own wireless access point. If it's not a possibility and you're not comfortable doing that, um, this will work just fine. But I would prefer to, number one, use a wired connection because Wi-Fi, especially in a very dense environment, like if you're in a hotel, trade show, whatever, you wanna stay away from Wi-Fi as much as you can. Number two, this little Wi-Fi dongle is not gonna be as good as like a true wireless access point. When we showed the front of this before, you probably noticed the WAN port, wide area network. Now WAN is usually an internet service provider or another form of internet other than cellular. So that's exactly what this is. So let's go back to the example of streaming CT, our business shows up at a hotel and we're doing an event for XYZ Corporation. We're in a ballroom. They've provided a 50 megabit up, 50 megabit down, low latency connection to us. What we can do is plug that into the WAN port of this router, and we can tell the router, hey, use that connection primarily, but keep the cellular up just in case that connection goes down. And I can't tell you how many times connections have gone down for all kinds of different reasons. Someone unplugs a cable, um, they didn't realize that the guest Wi-Fi was, that 50 meg is great when no one's on it, but then when 500 people show up to a conference, it's all the same 50 meg, and now it's totally slow, and your stream is failing, and you're being paid to do this stream. So you take the feed from the venue, we plug it in to the WAN port. Now let's imagine this is going out to the venue, router, wherever that is. There are three modes you can use this device in. Number one, it's full bonding mode, meaning it's taking all four connections, it's constantly evaluating what those connections are doing, how much bandwidth they have, what the latency is, and how many packets should be going through each connection. Mode two is a soft failover, and that's the scenario I was describing, where I get this cord from the venue, I plug it in, and I wanna make sure I don't lose the stream. 
So I'm gonna use that primarily because I don't wanna to have to pay more data charges than I need to. Right now it's $8 per gigabyte and that's combined between the carriers. So it's not per carrier, it's combined. I don't wanna pay $8 a gigabyte if I have a perfectly good stream from the venue. So in that case, it's a soft failover, meaning it keeps the cellular up and it just basically a keep alive. If I were to just unplug this, my stream is gonna stay up because it'll immediately switch over to the cellular. The third variation is a hard failover. So I have this plugged in, I'm not using any cellular data, I'm streaming all day, let's say, and I may be okay if it goes down, or maybe I'm not streaming, maybe I'm just providing internet. And I'm okay if it goes down, I just, like for a few seconds, I just want it to kick over to cellular if that happens. So something happens to the WAN connection, and now, a few seconds later, maybe not even that much, it could be even lower, the cellular kicks in, because it's already turned on, it's just not using the data. Cellular kicks in, and now everybody who is trying to do whatever they're doing, whether they're browsing the internet, or if you're streaming, it might just blip for a little bit and come back. I think for broadcast and live streaming, if that's what you're watching this channel for, we're gonna be using mostly soft failover or full bonding. I'm either gonna have a good connection from a venue or I'm gonna have no connection from a venue and I'm gonna just be using the cellular. Let's talk next about cellular priority on the towers. A good friend of mine, Tony, he and I both purchased T-Mobile home internet as a backup WAN at, for our houses. It worked great, it worked fine. We're able to get out to the internet. It actually has really good speeds. Tony's location, they had a storm come through. He lost his internet. Everybody in the area either lost power or lost internet. Now his T-Mobile home internet, which is deprioritized compared to a cellular internet, business level internet, enterprise level internet, first responder level internet. As you go up the chain, those higher tiers have higher priority on the towers. Well, Tony's home internet was basically unusable. And we're talking not trying to stream out to YouTube or you know do, do something like high end like we're doing with a broadcast. He was just trying to stream Netflix, which has a buffer. So this is an example of his home internet was totally deprioritized so that the people who are on cell phones, because remember, nobody had internet. So everybody pulled out their cell phones and started using it. So this is an example of what happens when you maybe go to a sports game and it's fine. You're setting up your cameras, you're getting all ready, your stream looks good, and then 20,000 people, 50,000 people, however many people show up at this arena, all on cellular, and guess what? Now you're prioritized just like them or lower than them, depending on what you're using. We used to use random hotspots that were attached to our plan. So we had a AT&T business plan. We also had a Verizon business plan. And then we tried out a few others like Mint Mobile, Google Fi, varying results. It was very clear that depending on where we were, we're two hours from New York City, two hours from Boston. If we had an event that was in a major metropolitan area, very different results than if we had an event that was not in a congested area. That's where you really notice the prioritization. So why am I talking about this? Well, Mr. Net, one of the reasons why we have gone with them is these three SIMs, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, the, the contracts that are behind that, which by the way, another plus is we don't have to now manage all these contracts. We had hotspots coming out our wazoo around here. So they manage these contracts with the cell phone carriers and they were able to negotiate enterprise level priority. So if you're in a constrained environment, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna have speeds. You're probably gonna have a much better chance than someone who is just using like a random Mint Mobile, for example, plugged into one of these slots. Now you can use your own SIM cards. So if for some reason you want to, let's say you're doing something that's not that critical and you don't wanna pay the $8 a gigabyte to have these combined and have the, the top priority data, um, you're just running a security camera out in the middle of nowhere, sure, you can use a, a higher data cap that's maybe less priority, you can use that. Um, that's the nice thing about Mr. Net is it's flexible. It doesn't just like lock you into a plan. We really, really like that. But the prioritization is a really important point when you're talking cellular bonding. Forget about this router or forget about Mr. Net for a second. Even if you are someone who's using a Live View, using a Digero, whatever it is, and you're just putting in random T-Mobile or Mint Mobile cards or, or low prioritization cards, you will run into the same thing that I'm talking about, especially in congested areas. So just keep that in mind. 
if you're never going to buy one of these or you're not interested in this, but you still do cellular bonding, it is important to think about at least having a business plan if you're doing this for work because business will get prioritized a little bit higher than a consumer or a home internet or the next tier down like a uh, Mint Mobile or Boost Mobile or one of those. Okay, what if something goes wrong? Now I've tested this several times and the folks over at Mr. Net um, have been very nice because I'm usually testing it at 10 o'clock at night on a weekend because frankly, I wanna see if what they claim is true. I am not just a shill for Mr. Net. I am constantly making sure that even though we're a reseller of it, um, we make a commission when we sell one, we don't, we're not the manufacturer. So I wanna make sure that the claims that they say are true. Support is one of the, the biggest claims they make, that they have 24 seven support that is top notch and immediate. So if I'm going to do a stream and it is at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night because we're doing some sort of late night music venue, whatever it is, that we can do that. If we run into a problem, we can reach out and we can get some help. I was testing something just last night with this. I had an issue or what I thought was an issue. I emailed support and literally within 60 seconds, I had a reply and they were looking at what was going on. Now it happened to be that wasn't actually an issue. It was just how something was being displayed in the client portal. Essentially what it is at the moment is you can log in and see some pretty rudimentary details about what's going on. You can see the modems, you can see the signal strength that they're connected to, and you can make some basic changes on the failover types. You can also do port forwarding. Now that's one really interesting thing with this router. If you're an IT person, you might say, how could you do port forwarding if you're using three or four networks? That doesn't seem like that would work. Well, the reason is, is because all of those packets are being sent up to currently an EC2 instance in Amazon Web Services. They're being sent to that instance and then aggregated and then sent out a single static IP. They're being sent out to the actual internet. So what that means is, is that static IP that's on that EC2 instance in the cloud allows you to accept traffic and it will port forward that traffic to this device. Let's say I have three SRT decoders that I'm sending out on an event and it's with a junior technician who really is just there to set up a few uh, PTZ cameras and encoders and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this remotely or I'm gonna have someone run this remotely. So we have a little fly pack, we plug this in. I want the remote engineer to be able to log into all those devices, to control the PTZ cameras, log into the SRT decoders, reboot them, change an address, whatever that is. One good thing about the current client portal, and I hope they don't change this, is you can actually access it not on the same network. So you don't have to be connected to the network that this box is on. So what does that mean? It means, let's say I had five of these and I had five fly packs, like I was saying, and they're going out to different events. And I wanna see what is the Verizon modem uh, signal strength at XYZ venue that one of these boxes is out at. I can log in and I can see all my devices in the client portal. But overall for us, this is the best solution because it allows us to have, when we show up at an event, not only can we stream at a reliable bonded fashion, but we can also have everything else that's connected on that network. If we need to pull down a PowerPoint really quickly and we have no other connectivity, we can do it. If we need to see a return feed from another location or another studio, we can use this to do it. So it's not just like a Live View or DeGero or whatever, where I'm. it's specific to video. I can do other things with it, which is really cool. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful or educational, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more streaming and broadcast related content. We'll see you next time.